Okay, welcome to this tutorial on a more modern slideshow for Vegas Pro 15. And we'll dive right in. The first thing you need to do is go into your options, preferences, and make sure that overlap is turned off uh, when you're inserting media. So basically when we put the uh, pictures on the timeline, we don't want any fades or anything. We just want the, the images butt up against each other. So make sure this is unchecked. Okay, so we've done that. Now we just need to go and grab some media. I'm going to assume you know how to do that. So we'll just take these and drag them into our timeline. Ignore this track for the moment. Um, it'll become clear why that's here later on in the tutorial. Um, it's not something you have to create. So we've got our images, but we still need two more tracks. So you can either use the, the mouse or the menu or keyboard shortcuts to insert two more tracks. And then just for convenience, I'm going to group these. This is not something you have to do. Okay, and then one of the second things that you need to do is make the second track a compositing child. So we will use this menu, make compositing child. Oops. First, deselect everything else. Make compositing child. And then under here, you want to set the uh, compositing mode on the first track to multiply. Now, if you don't have these buttons available, just go into the hamburger menu, uh, edit visible button set, and then you can choose any of the buttons that you want to have readily accessible. Okay. Now what we need to do is go into Media Generators and Solid Color, and we're going to drag this down to the timeline. And what you want to do is change this to one second duration, and then you can close that. Now what you'll see is these little black markers appear to show you where that event will loop. And we're going to resize that so it's exactly one second in length. And then we'll drag it over here just to butt up against uh, the end of this picture. Now, the next thing we need to do is add a chroma key event to this. So we will come in here. You can either do it this way or you could drag it from the effects window. I find it, I don't know, easy to do either one. So we'll drag that, come in here, change the color to black. And then we can close that. Okay, so that's complete. Now to give yourself something to look at while you're doing the rest of the work, take the second image and you can press the control key and mouse drag, just bring it up to the first track. And then just to make things clear, resize it, although it's not critical. Okay, so now we need to come in here and create some masks on the white event. So open that sucker up and we're just gonna create some rectangles and also make sure that sync cursor is enabled. If that button's not lit up, then you need to check it and light it up. And then place the cursor at the beginning of the event and check the mask button. Now for this demonstration, I'm just gonna create a couple of vertical rectangles. And then I'm going to move the cursor, uh, five or six frames. You can tweak this uh, until you get something that makes you happy. And then I'm going to move these over to the other side of the frame because as this plays, I want those to animate and slightly differently. So as we scrub back and forth, you'll see those move across. And then what I want to do for this case is I'm going to come a little farther along and I'm going to have these animate back the other way, but I'm going to do something a little bit different. So this one's going to come all the way across. This one is going to open up to encompass the entire frame. So I want to do that so that by the time we're at the end, I may actually, oops, may actually want that a little farther. And we'll have to play with the, uh, the look overall. And this is something that you can do as well. So here's what the event looks like just played as it is now. Nothing too special, but it's a little different from your typical uh, transition. Okay, now let's make the transition pop a little bit more. So what we'll do is we'll add an effect to the top track um, just to make the colors pop a bit. So let's go and look for 
Vegas color corrector. That's the one I typically like to use for increasing the saturation. So we'll pump the saturation just all the way up. And you can see that in the, uh, the bits that are showing through, the colors really pop. And you can use whatever works for you. Um, for this particular transition, I, I like that particular look. Okay. You can also add this to the event itself, but that would mean more work because you'd have to do it for every single one in your project. So it's easier just to add it to the track. Okay, so let's add a few more things. I think we want some blur. Um, you can use pretty much anything you want. I tend to be quite happy with Gaussian blur. We'll lower this a little bit because we don't want to make it completely unintelligible. Uh, we want to give a hint of what's under there. And I think that does that fairly well. And then, because I felt like it, I wanted to use Pixelate, because I thought it looked okay. So we can come in here, and again, you can use, you should use whatever effects work for you. So just want a little bit of pixelation along each axis, just to make it a bit different. Okay, the next thing you'd want to do is change the mask a bit to soften it. So the simplest way to do that is to come in here and add some effects. In fact, let's do this here. Let's add some Gaussian blur to the mask. And then you can see that that softens it quite a bit there. You could lower it. Really tweak these to what works for you. Okay, the next thing you need to do is align these better with the changing of the, uh, the pictures. And you'll also want to add some fade. I typically like a little bit of fade here at the beginning, um, just a few frames. And the nice thing about this, it'll tell you how many frames you've got. So let's go for five frames. And then we'll go for five frames here. And then on the end, we'll do five frames of fade out. And then we'll put the cursor here just to make things a little bit easier. Select both of these and then align where it starts to fade out with the beginning of the next picture. Now if we play that, you get a fairly nice little fade in. Now, how do you get it to the rest of the pictures? Well, that's the easy part. One thing you want to turn on, though, is Auto Ripple. Um, so you can turn that on down here. Also make sure that only affected tracks is enabled because you don't want everything moving around. <clears throat> so the simplest thing to do here is select this picture, right click on it, and then choose select events to end. And then holding the control button while you move your mouse, just duplicate these up, up here. And it really doesn't matter where you put them precisely because um, you're going to move these around. And you can also leave these uh, at whatever length they happen to be because most of the time they're going to be invisible due to this chroma key. Okay, so now you want to copy this effect as well. Uh, simplest thing at this point, again, is to hold the control key and just drag that over. Now you have a choice. You could either create a copy, um, which I'm going to do with all of these, or you could create a reference to the original media. If you know that every single one of these is going to look the same, which of course is the simplest, um, you could create a reference, and then if you decided to change their look later on, all you'd have to do is change the first one. But for now, we're going we're gonna to make a copy in every case. So what we also want to do is zoom in and make sure these are aligned. And they weren't. That's okay. So we'll align those. Now we want to make a copy of these for every picture that we have. And the more you have, the easier this gets. You can multi-select create a copy. You come in here and select to end again and then create a whole another copy and just keep doing that until you have all the events. Now I messed up that one a little bit. This belongs over here. There. Um, okay now we need two more so let's just select these two 
Let's zoom in a bit. And then copy that there. And now we should have all of our events. I'm going to go ahead and move that just to, oops, no, I'm not. I'll do that again, just to make the timeline look even. So we start our project, start playing. We've got the first image. After a few seconds, it starts to transition over. And you basically have this transition each time. And you can layer on as many effects as you want, either at the track level or the event level. If you decide you don't like the way uh, this transition works, it's easy enough to change. Uh, you just come in here and change the masking. And then I'll show you this. So this is why I have these other tracks, is I have a whole other set of this that I created. These are muted right now, which is why they're not playing. But what I can do is I can mute these and also hide them. So this is a stuff that I just showed you. I can unmute this and it looks similar at least as far as the pictures go. But this transition mask is a little different. So if I decide you know you want a completely different transition mask you can come in here and edit it. So these are the masks that are in this one. So again it's just rectangles but as you scrub through here, you can see they expand and then they shrink and then they expand completely uh, to morph into the, the next picture. So let's say we want this new one to be everywhere. You can copy this uh, either with control C or use the menu and then go up to the event you want to replace it with. So here's the old event sure these are muted. So here's the old one. And then you can right click and you can either paste event attributes, which in this case would be perfectly fine. It would paste everything, uh, which in this case we want. Or you can selectively paste event attributes and then choose whether you want effects or pan crop or everything, which would be the same as the other menu option. In this case, we want to paste the event effects and the pan crop. We only changed pan crop um, but it's safer just to do this. So now we have the new effect and if we continue playing we will see the old effect here. And if we want that we could leave it if we just want it on one but we could also right click select events to end and then right click again and paste event attributes and then if we play these it's got the new effect. Okay the last thing we want to do is add just a little bit of zoom. We're going to use the paste effects again um, or selectively paste again. So come into the first picture and place your cursor at the end, which on our case it was at the end, so I didn't have to move that, but I wanted to show you. <clears throat> and then just bring the frame in a little bit. Not a whole lot. We don't want to make the viewer throw up. So when we play that, the picture is going to zoom just a hair. And now we want to apply that to the rest of them. So again, we copy this event, select events to end. Then we can selectively paste event attributes. Now in this case, usually with video or images, I find it safer to just paste exactly what I want changed. Sometimes you can just say, oh, I'll paste everything, I don't care. Uh, but in this case, I want to make sure there aren't any additional uh, effects or anything like that. So I really just want the pan crop settings. And then hit OK. And I should find that all of the images now zoom a little bit after they are fully in view. Okay, well, I hope this was a useful tutorial. Uh, if it was, please give it a like and subscribe to my channel. I intend to do many more of these. Thanks. Bye-bye.